What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the SUP Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Luke Trevisi. We're back at it again. I got a top knot going. We got a lot to talk about this week, all right? I got my co-host with me. We got Chris Cheney to my left. Yep. And uh, next to me on my right is going to be Lawrence Deloach. What's up, Lawrence? What's up? All right, man. We're all here. How, how are we all feeling right now? Oh, great, dude. I had uh, 18 holes of golf. Didn't golf bad, but I lost my phone and my AirPods while I did that. So I'm not feeling too great, but I'm feeling good at my performance. Nice. I think Chris got robbed, but Chris don't want to tell no one. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I would – are you kidding me? I would that, – that's how I would start my YouTuber career is be like, Yo, I almost died today. And I'd have like a whole 45-minute video of it. That Story time. Rob, yo, and he don't want, he's just like, I lost my phone and my, my AirPods. And we're like, how'd you lose it? I don't even know. You got robbed, bro. <laughs> Fine. We've all been there. Motherfuckers get robbed every day, B. You know I was I mean? COVID robbed? Nah, you was just robbed, robbed. <laughs> <laughs> Bros in the mask came up. They're like, yo, phone, pods, give it. There you go, man. It's all good, <laughs> man. It's all good. You white, you got to give us something. You know what yeah, I mean? Man. You got to give, give black people and minorities <laughs> something, bro. You owe us. You know what I mean? Much <laughs> like the uh, the NBA. Uh, everyone owes uh, basketball players for bringing back some type of normalcy and joy to people's lives. Yes. Uh, season restarted on Thursday night with uh, an amazing, well, an amazing second game between the Los Angeles Lakers, Los Angeles Clippers. Yeah, that was really good. Well, that was a good game. Um, what are you guys? What are your thoughts on the NBA restart? Um, so uh, we spoke a little bit this off mic for a second. It literally looks like you're playing 2K, and I, I can't. It's the lighting. And it's the, like the lack of audience that like, the, by the way, the zoom thing in the back is ridiculous. We'll get into that for in a minute, but like, it's, it literally looks like you're just playing 2k. Like I came home and we got a new TV. So the, the picture is so crisp. And I was like, Oh, and then I didn't see their hands have controllers in them. And I was like, Oh, Oh, this is actual basketball. That's, <laughs> it was, there were good games though. They were good games. Generally speaking, I mean, the Celtics really fucking biffed it, especially Tatum. But, like, for the most part, like, I mean, basketball's back, and it's nice. It's uh, it's wonderful. And, and you said that uh, Celtics had a pretty bad game on Friday. They actually had a wonderful game today against the Portland Trailblazers, in which they won by four. So, Sick. you know, we're, uh, we're, we're, we're – it's an interesting time. Obviously, it's a bubble. Uh, we're seeing that uh, the NBA is – they've set it up. Uh, it's working out. We're – uh, four days into games uh, where you see other sports in, in this country and, and it's kind of faltering. Baseball's on, like, you know, it's on its deathbed. Oh, know, yeah. If it's oh, going to yeah. make it. Uh, football, the NFL is, yeah, oh, we're going we're gonna to get through this season. We're going to start. And, and, you know, they cancel preseason games. They've um, – and we don't know if we're going to get the NFL or we're going to get – obviously, I don't think we're going to get a full 16-game season of the NFL. Uh, but – with the NBA, we're seeing a lot of things that uh, a lot of initiatives uh, it seems like, you know, obviously the names on the back of the jerseys, see the court has Black Lives Matter. Yeah, that is yeah. all very cool to see. And I didn't know that at first. So I was I was looking at the screen crazy. I was like, I saw the Black Lives Matter. I was like, oh, sick, mm -hmm. dope. Mm -hmm. And then I was looking at the names. I'm like, who's a quality? And it, like, it, this is all like very early, like within the first couple minutes, I'm like, oh, it says... Oh, and then I noticed most of the white dudes just wear ally, and that made me weak. That's very funny. <laughs> yeah, there were some players that wore ally. Uh, <laughs> but it's the white dudes. They just, you know, I'm an ally. Uh, yeah, I think that's that. That goes to show you how the uh, how the NBA is such a, a players' league. And besides, it's a it's a quote unquote urban sport. So I think in in their the faces of the league are are black players: LeBron, Giannis, Harden, Westbrook, Steph Curry. You know all these. Yeah, absolutely. People. So I think uh, I think it's interesting. Whereas you know, obviously baseball and football, you know, th there are plenty of black faces. There are plenty of superstars who are of color. Uh, but the NFL, such it's a rooted in in the southern, the southern sport. You know, so I think you know. Mm. A lot of times, and when I say it's a Southern sport, you're not going to get the same type of, I think, the same type of treatment that the NBA is, is giving their players. I mean, granted, yeah. the NFL knows that the face of their league, Patrick Mahomes, is a, is a black man, but uh, we, we're not seeing the same type of protections. And I think we're going to see that even coming in the next month or so where 
players are just not protected in the NFL. And I, like I said, I don't think it's going to happen. But right now, yeah. enjoy basketball. Um, yeah, basket, basketball is sick. Basketball is pretty sick. I'm happy for all of the, uh, the Kawhi memes to be back. Uh-huh. Uh, did yes. you guys see that one of uh, – I don't remember which Marcus brother, but one of the Marcus brothers was given Kawhi bunny ears. And then he caught him, and he just looks right down, and he's like, I don't know, why is this happening to me? <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't see that, but I, I didn't, I didn't see that either. But anything Kawhi is just great. He's a walking meme. Uh, yeah. well, what I like about the what I like about the NBA bubbles are our athletes are still trying to uh, stay fashionable, and I think that's uh, it's very commendable. We're, we're seeing guys, uh, aka the sneaker king, PJ Tucker, mm-hmm. is uh, he's bought he bought like forty pairs of sneakers off of eBay. Uh, he said he has like a sweet. He has over sixty pairs of sneakers in the room now. Uh, and on Friday night, they played the Dallas Mavericks, and we saw PJ with a player exclusive Jerry Lorenzo Fear of God one in the Rockets colorway. I this is probably the craziest PE that I've ever seen in my entire life because there's not only it's a designer collab, right? It's a designer collab player edition. Yes. Exclusive, that I've never seen that before. Yeah, I don't know. That's... I don't know if anyone else has done that before. I, I, if I, if I'm ignorant to it, then like you guys put me on. Like I, I can be, I can be like you know, I'll learn. But like, when I saw, I was texting you guys crazy. I was like, yo, have you guys seen this before? I never saw a picture of those. Yeah. No one ever mentioned them to me. Apparently, they're called the Air Tux, which I hate that name. Why not play off like Tuck of God or what? You know, do something with Jerry. I don't know why it has to be Air. They don't call Air of Tuck. <laughs> Look, I don't. No one calls those shoes the Fear God uh, airs. No one. There's not air in that name. I don't know why it needs to be Air Tuck. But uh, yo, I I was like bugging out. I was like tr- I was like tapping my friends. I'm like, what is he wearing? I'm like, <laughs> yo, can we pause? Cared. Yeah, no one. Ever, it was like, Chris, shut up. <laughs> the Air Tucks. I, I think like them. I like them too. I think it's very interesting with, with uh, PJ Tucker. I think he's carved out. Obviously, we've said this before. He's carved out a, a niche, a niche, uh, and market where. He's known for his sneakers more than his basketball game. If he, if yes. he, he's a, he, I mean, he's a solid defender. I mean, he's not going to score 20 points a game. He has a role, but he's also just known as the NBA sneaker king. Um, we saw him. We saw him wear uh, Grateful Dead uh, SBs. Yeah. Uh, he had the orange one with the WNBA logo hoodie, which is actually a dope hoodie. I don't know if you saw yes. that. The it is a dope one. hoodie. So we got we got that, and then we saw him wear the green. I mean, he's I mean, for as long as he's in the bubble, I mean, he's just gonna fucking uh, rock everything. Um, he's just gonna drip, man. Drips. That's what he does. Well, you guys, are you guys opposed to wearing a, 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 w, a WNBA hoodie, a women's hoodie, or not a women's hoodie, but it's a? No, I I I mean that color palette that they have on that is enough for me to be like, no, nah, it doesn't matter what's on that, I'd probably wear it. Yeah. Do you have screen share available? I got it up right here. Yeah, sure. Let me get you right now. All right, you're good. All right. Right here. Boom. Look at that. Gorgeous. Yeah, it's fucking fuego. Yeah, that's a nice that's that's a nice hoodie. I would not be against putting that on, on, on my body. Also, you know nothing what? about me says that I wouldn't like the WNBA. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what it is? It's like that's an ironic like flex. Like, because Kobe was so, like, before he passed, rest in peace, he was, like, kind of pushing WNBA stuff because of his daughters. You know, like, a lot of the guys, like, the you know, these legends, they're kind of, like, they have daughters who play basketball. They're very, like, pro women's league stuff. So, like, and then, you know, this is sort of, like, a it transcends to guys like this where you now he's making it okay for us to wear it. So, like, these levels that have been reached are, like, yeah, dude, I'd fucking wear that shit. Plus, that silhouette is fire. Yeah. I think the silhouette's fine. I think the color is perfect. I, we, I, there's, there's definitely a marketing push by the NBA for the for the play the men uh, the men players to wear the, the the hoodie because I've seen it on multiple players. I think LeBron was wearing it. Multiple guys are wearing it. Uh, it has like a sixty dollar price point. I, I was thinking about buying it. Uh, I don't need another hoodie, but I do def- it. I definitely uh, can see myself uh, possibly purchasing that hoodie. I don't want to spend sixty dollars, but I'm I've spent more than enough money on items so 
Yeah, I dogs. Do. Support women, dog. Come on. Of, of course. I mean, I'm I'm definitely definitely supporting women. I think that's uh, it's an it's a nice hoodie. So, um, I was looking at the uh, I was looking at Kuji sweater this week, but this that might be put on hold. <laughs> For the Kuji sweater. Yeah, I'm gonna be that guy. Oh boy. Uh, f- <laughs> Him with a man bun and a man Kuji, bun, sweater. Kuji sweater. Just I'm <laughs> this, this fall. I'm gonna be a different guy. <laughs> Yo, that so is this crazy. Is, this is the Kawhi meme, by the way. A fun guy. You're gonna be a fun <laughs> guy. Very fun guy. <laughs> Look at his face. It's so funny. He he, he knows he he got hit. Yeah, uh, he does it again, and then he goes, "What? <laughs> How could you do this to me? Why would you do this to me?" Yeah, Kawhi, Kawhi is uh is that guy. Um, listen, we got a uh, we got an interesting. Uh, I saw a uh, a super. Speaking of you know basketball, we're gonna talk about you know one of the probably the greatest basketball player ever, Michael Jordan. Uh, you know, uh, before the Air Jordan one, he was uh, playing in the airships. Yep. Yep. And there's supposed to be a super duper limited. A uh, pair of airships releasing, uh, it's like 300 pairs or something like that. It's a band colorway. Yep. Oh August 7th is the alleged release date. Oh my God. And I mean, this is the one that everyone wanted when that pack came out. Mm-hmm. Right. They sold you two shoes to try to like compensate you not getting this one. And then after, you know, which that price tag was, that was high. I don't remember the exact retail, but it was, it was expensive. And then you know the, now they're like, oh, well now we'll give you these. Oh my god! Did and you, it's gonna and it's gonna yeah. be super limited too. It's not gonna be. Yeah. Where does it say it? It says it right here that oh well, there's a global raffle, and then they also said that they were uh, they were gonna leave like I think 150 stickers around the store in Italy, mm-hmm. and if you found one, you could buy you could buy a pair. Mm-hmm. So I hate everything. I can't have them, so I don't like them. Look, man, the the reality of the situation here is the world is upset at the U.S. and they're <laughs> making it very clear with their sneaker releases that upcoming because there's a lot of outside the U.S. stuff that's not had nothing to do with us. Yeah, I, I know the the Tokyo Jordan ones. That are there's a bunch out. of stuff. These specifically, yeah. Well, this is just too. This is this is kind of it is kind of upsetting uh, because it, it almost like you said you get a you get a pair of ships that a lot of people have been clamoring for they wanted for years bro and and you find you finally Nike decides in 2020 to release a pair of ships and then the first ship is in a pack that's super hard to obtain yep. and then the second one is like oh well we're gonna release them in Italy you know and 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 it's kind of like. It, uh, it, it, it always makes you say that, like, Jordan brand is, they don't, I mean, we've always said this, but they don't give a fuck. Like, no. <laughs> Republicans buy sneakers, too. It, Italians buy sneakers, too. I think that's, <laughs> no, the, that's the one. Well, yeah, you know what? One. I think from the Dior thing, I think they're trying to make a push for a stronger foreign market to enter that high-end space. It seems uh, like part of their plan is to kind of – utilize more of that sector of this space like the you know that this sort of price point Mm -hmm. um because normally when you think of italy you don't think of jordans so uh by establishing now this is just my theory i might be full of shit but just by thinking about taking like one of these i'll I'll call this a grail you know or at least the, the concept of this shoe is a grail to give that push into italy and have that spotlight in italy just after the Jordan one got a f- first high end collab. It seems to me like they're trying to make a push to sort of enter that like a uh, new tier. I, I I'm going to disagree with you on that. And when you say Jordans are not in Italy, because the Jordan two was, was first made in Italy. It was Italian leather. It was, that is it, true. It, but it. that, w- that was a different time and it was backed by a different. W- w- what were the first ones? Are you talking the just Don ones? Is that the first time they used the leather? No, the, the original air Jordan twos, from 1986 were uh, Italian leather. It was Italy. It was made in Italy. Um, sure. so- Even with those facts still being true, right? You're educating me on that. It still seems like the way that they're moving to this is through this higher end market. But also the store, well, I'm, I'm going to say the, the Jordan 1 Dior's are completely different than a pair of airships that are in a backdoor uh, 
Bottega, I don't know if I'm pronouncing the, the backdoor Bottega, 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 whatever it is. Yeah, that's not a, a Bottega, yeah. That, that's not a Dior. That's like a regular, it's like a, it's a regular, like, you know, sneaker store. So it's not like it's a, it, it, I know what you're saying with, with the Dior. Dior mm-hmm. were released, you know, it was a $2,000 price point. It was released, you know, it's actually the Dior, the house of Dior, and Jordan created a collab. These are a a Jordan uh, that model that, you know, has not been released by, you know, it hasn't, you know, this is like the first time in years that we're getting a pair of ships and for it to be only released in Italy, that is, or the, the first pair, the white and red ones, which was part of a pack that was super hard to obtain, it's kind of like, yeah there's there's some there's an issue here to me because it's like you know people want these shits so it's like why i'm not saying you got to make a million pairs because yeah then that's a problem but what i'm saying is you know it's super limited i think it's like 300 pairs it's like 300 plus pairs that are coming out of this model so i think the the thing about it is and this is a t- this is a, a perfect example of how jordan brand operates it's the white and red is part of a pack. The, the band colorway is in Italy. Now we're going to come out with airships, but it's going to be some blue and green shits that people eat. Now, by this time, you're like, well, fuck it. I guess I got to get a pair of airships. Yeah. And it's a terrible colorway. And they could flood the market. And that's it. So I'm a little, I don't really like the way it went down here. But I mean, this is what Nike is doing right now. So yeah, it kind of is what it is. I mean, it all, you know, it also could, in reality could have something to do with just the poor COVID uh, things that are going on in the U.S. Like we're kind of looked at as the laughing stock right now when it comes to this uh, sickness. Yeah. So That's also true. No, but you I, know what? No, no, no. You know why? Because this is, but this is also this is not a this is not something that is. This is a normal Nike uh, tactic. When you look at the when you look at the reverse skunks, you know they did 420 pairs that went to a shop, a random a, a random yeah. shop in Minnesota. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's they. This is not the first time that we've seen this this year. So I think this is more of a, a this is more of a trend that Nike is testing out and seeing how far they can go with it. That I will say. Interesting. Yeah. I could hear that. I hear that. I hear both sides of the argument. I think uh, I I do like the idea of I think Nike trying to get into like maybe a higher end space. Just because, like, we've we've seen a couple of collabs already. We, we've seen Dior. We've seen Sakai. Sakai do very well. I'm I'm sure there's a, a lot of high-end uh, brands that would want to get involved with Nike, and uh, having more stuff in Europe uh, might be enticing for them as well. But who knows? But I do, I definitely agree with what Lawrence is saying in that you know, it's it's, it's this is nothing new from Nike either. Yeah, I mean, I would. These are ones I would really like. Damn, I, damn, these are these are fire. <laughs> <laughs> and we're just if there's only 300 pairs, this is going to be one of those that's going to start as four digits for sure on StockX. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, this is this is definitely if it's only you know like I said if you said if it's only three 300 pairs, I mean we're looking at easy four thousand five thousand dollars immediately off from the beginning of in the secondary market, maybe even more. I, uh, yeah, I mean, look, uh, I mean, the more I'm thinking about it, Lawrence, you're probably more, you're probably correct. I still see them trying to blur the line of how much a Jordan should cost. Because, like, if if everyone gets so adjusted to like these limited quantity, high resale prices, or just high retail prices because of the name attached, like they're they're physically moving the goalpost up hundreds of hundreds of dollars at the time, right? Uh-huh. At like. Do Grateful Dead SBs. I know we, we could talk about, like, the amount of shoes that it costs how much for days. Because we do. We, every week we talk about some new shoe that's another $1,000. Right. But, like, you look at the shoes that they've come out with where they've retailed $100 and then generally accepted at $1,000 on average, say, not specifically anything. But then you get to this and it's just like, all right, only in Italy 300 pairs. I, I, of course, I'm like, yeah, this is absurd. You guys are trying to enter the high-end market through forcing us. You know what I mean? Like, the Jordan doc, like I'm, I think I'm getting on my Lawrence conspiracy tip right now because it's like, it seems like it's just all stockpiling into this one direction where it's like, all right, we want you to pay a thousand dollars for Jordans. I I don't think that's crazy. I literally don't think that's crazy. In the past couple of months that we've seen resale prices go through the roof, 
uh, yeah, that Last Dance documentary was just one giant ad for, for Jordans. I don't know, man. The, I think the value of Jordan keeps going up. Well, I think I think what we're getting to is, I mean, once again, it's the guy, the the guy at the helm right now, uh, Humphrey, who he's, I guess he's trying to get Jordan Brand back to how it was from like 2010 to like 2012, 13, where general releases were selling out every week. You can definitely make a profit off of just reselling general releases. Mm -hmm. um, you are getting some, you're not getting you're getting some wacky colorways they're doing some things like you know with the translucent background on the back of a three and you know and, and then the jump man um but but i i do feel like um it, it it every year just you know like you said there's some new shit like i remember even five years ago when when you said when when don c was able to sell a jordan 2 for 350 dollars uh, and then people were like, "This is insane." And then a year later, he was like, "Well, you know what? Let's do six fifty, and we'll include a hat in it because you know." So every every year, there's some new shit that that someone in Jordan is like, "Well, you know, what? let's test this out." So yeah. you know, I think that's um, so now when we're getting you know two thousand dollar Jordan ones, there's there's always the let's see how how far we can take this. Yeah. They're doing that in more ways than one, too, especially if you look at how they're doing, like, these uh, this, this Europe anniversary thing. So Air Max Day is already, like, generally considered a streetwear holiday among, you know, like, we all, everyone's like, come March. One of the things that us three, including our friends, talk about besides March Madness is Air Max Day. Mm -hmm. Right. So with things like this, um, just to pivot over to, like, uh, this – sneaker europe once again i mean i don't know what it's like over there in europe in terms of people trying but if it's anything like the u.s i mean it's going to be bullshit where people are are going to be flustered and not get anything and it's just to get people's hopes up yeah but they are pushing it to be more of a uh i think they're trying to uh segregate it's not the right word uh it is like in, in divide isn't either they're trying to give them their own culture i guess because a lot of the stuff that goes on is so worldly but B nike being a u.s company we get a lot of focus on it and then we have our major markets like new york la you know then chicago where jordan's from like we have all of these pillars so i'm not trying to go back to like the like the the um european thing or the italian thing saying like they're trying to enter a new market but it does seem like they're trying to cater to everyone but us at least in, in this push it seems like this first push is like all right let's start giving like europe and everybody else some shit Right. And have it come back in. Because even that, that um, the all-white, off-white one, that might have been really the first time they're like, all right, we'll get – because they do get specific releases. It's not like we get everything that they get. And, like, we they, we, we, they have some stuff we don't. But of course. shit like this makes it to me like, oh, they're really going to start to expand the market and have, like, its own, like, little uh, small cultures in these different places. Yeah, like every shoot – like what, uh, what Virgil did with, uh, with those Louis Vuittons. Yeah, kind of. That might be around. So if just to remind the uh, the listeners, if you didn't know, so that, that V308 train or whatever that Virgil shoe that looks like an Avia basketball sneaker from the 80s, he had different colors dropped in different places, which he was trying to make like this, like, all right, well, green, get Europe, whatever. But that's Luke was referencing. Yeah, exactly. But it was, yeah, it was just the lace color. But, you know, I think that, but like in a bigger scale where it's actual physical sneakers – because, you know, what? we actually had uh, a kid DM the Instagram account saying that, like, yo, can you guys kind of cover what's going on in Europe as far as sneakers? Because we only have sneakers and stuff. Mm. We only have s, s yeah. Yeah, I mean, boutiques out there, like, there are some, like, pillars, like Paris, want Pata, you know what I mean? Um, mm. Sneakers and stuff. It, like, there are certain sort of entities that, like, are holding it down out there, but they really don't have a lot. So it kind of makes sense that they're trying to do something like this. Yeah. I hear it. I, 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 yeah, they're trying to make a sneakers a global, a global thing. I hear you. Let's not forget last year, and it's already been. I know it's been affecting all of us, but uh, Nike announced that as Nike SB announced that they wouldn't ship international. Like you had to be in Europe to buy a pair of. Well, Nike SBs in general. In Nike in yeah. general is not. You know, oh, not just Nike yeah. SB. So you just so yeah. So like for a lot of stores where people were able to 
like you said, take advantage of, you know, ordering sneakers from, you know, like you said, Europe and, you know, and all these other countries. Now it's like you cannot, they're not supposed to ship these sneakers to other countries. It's like. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I guess that was like first move in, uh, in trying to promote more of a regional sn sneaker love, I guess. Well, I, yeah. think, I think what happens is I think a lot of times, and you know, once again, I don't know what the situation is overseas, but a lot of Americans use have bots. Right. Like, you know, that's that's a American. I, you know, once again, I, I'm not, I can't say what it's like in other countries, but bots are prevalent in, in in the U.S. and a lot of these foreign shops, a lot of these American shops don't have bot protection. So if you're if you're a country or you know if you're and you and you do a drop at 3 a.m. you know whatever people have their bots set up and, and they eat a lot of the time so i think a lot of times you have these foreign shops that are just like you know a lot of times they just try to they you know it's like damn we're just shipping all of the product to yeah. america so uh, that's true that's true I, i'm very uh you know i'm once again i mean there were some spots that i did order from from foreign places i, I forgot where but i mean i definitely ordered sneakers from europe have them come to america I, when i was in college i used to order from uh asia all the time I mean, like spots in japan i remember getting air force ones in college so i mean <clears throat> that's always been there but I, I definitely i feel as if like you said it's almost like nike is like mm, can't we don't want to do this yeah yeah I mean, I'm jealous though. Why? Because they're getting all these restocks. I mean, dude, I understand. But once again, we don't know what the stock is like. We don't know how, how it's going to be. Um, a lot of, I, I don't know. I, I feel you. I, cause yeah, we, I've, I have no idea what it's like out there. Yeah. Maybe they got bots too. Maybe their bots have little stupid curly mustaches and they go wee wee. Yeah. They have they accents. Win. We don't know. Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't know what the what the culture is out there. But I mean, like you said, I mean, I always see, you know, I look at Supreme and I look at all these other places. And I mean, there's definitely a, a, a heavy streetwear culture. So I don't know how, how bad it is or if people are super cutthroat like it is in America. But we shall see. Um, Chris, you mentioned something earlier uh, about uh, sneakers, uh, sneakers day. But there's also the Gotham Air Max ones that are releasing. Mm -hmm. Yep. On uh, on April, on August eighth, which I like half of these. <laughs> you like half of these. Yeah, <laughs> those ones. These ones are, f these ones are like golf dress shoes? shoes. These are like, like I they're like I would wear those to an interview type shit like that. Jesus Christ, You're that so brown trash, dude. That brown leather is fire. Look. The one thing I'll say about the Air Max, which I think, I don't know, I think most people agree with, at least conversations I've had separately, is it's very dress in the front and sport in the back. I get that, yeah. So when they dress them up in this nice brown leather, like it's a, like a, like a wingtip or some shit, mm -hmm. it's really, oh, come on. Look at that detail shot. That's crazy. All right. That's pretty cool. <laughs> because that's not even really like a mesh dog. I don't even know what that kind of, like, if that's, that's leather, just like. isn't it? That, see, that's what I'm saying, man. That's nice. That other one that's made out of, like, ice material can get out of here. That's going to yellow fucking so quick. This will yellow. Those, the first ones will remind me of the Missing Link. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, I see that. They definitely give me Missing Link vibes. These, I don't know. These are, like, the leftover plastic that wasn't used on the off-white floors. So basically, just for the audio listeners, there's two different Air Maxes that have come out. Uh, one is, like I said, like super brown leather. This other one seems like it's just like, uh, like clear plastic. Like it's like I can't tell if it's patent leather or not, but it's just it's got that like, sort of like, sort of like the the Dior shoe that when people think of Dior making their own sneakers, like that type of clear material. Uh -huh. Yeah, they got that like clear kind of bone color, almost like cartilage looking, you know, uh, plastic on the toe box and then you've got kind of this translucent like uh back tabs i don't yeah, know dated on the back though wait luke go back up to the information to see because you can get them it's, it's only on sneakers you can get these right i believe i'm, I'm so. assuming yeah yeah uh, yep it looks like it's going to be only available on nike.com yeah so i don't know but these are cool, man. That 
look, I mean, I, I don't know how, what you guys have done for interview stuff, but like, I always end up wearing sneakers cause I, like, I, I'm not comfortable, not like physically I'm uncomfortable, but I'm also just not comfortable cause I feel like I look weird in things that aren't sneakers. So something like this is like, oh, this is like my nice, this is my brown leather shoe. You know it depends I mean? on the job though. You work in like a graphic design space. So I, I feel like you get a little bit more leeway. Yeah, it's true. I could show up in a graphic tee that just says like "fuck" on it, and like and be like, "Oh, he's an artist. He's a true artist." Yeah, dude, dudes who have like seven hundred piercings and two full sleeves. Yeah. <laughs> like, hello, my name is Rob. They're like, oh, he's great portfolio. Great Fucking portfolio. <laughs> amazing portfolio. Uh, the the weird like plastic ones, I I almost like them. Like they look like I like all these like future shoes kind of feels to them, but. Yeah, they, they, these kind of missed for me. Um, s- speaking of misses, um, mm-hmm. just to transfer over. So now we have more of a detailed look at what this Union 4 is and its alternate colorway. Right. Um, mm-hmm. So we sort of spoke praises about the, that first one that we saw with the... Uh, Did the, we? We kind of we argued yeah, about it. I think generally speaking, we were pretty positive. Yeah. Right? I guess so. Um, the other colorway, though, I have... I'm cool. Oh, let me pull it up. I got the guava, you. This one? The guava. Yeah, here we guava. go. So my yeah. only yeah. no. So my only thing about those was the not punching out on the uh, that plastic part. But if you go scroll down, Luke, there's the other colorway, and it Oof. man. Oof. Oh my god! It looks like Barbie's summer house. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> This will attract the ABGs, man. This is exactly – you didn't listen to my cries. And they were like, you want something to attract girls, put on some shoes that look like the essence of Hello Kitty. I mean, so <laughs> – the essence of – yo, if Hello Kitty was, Kitty was going to stomp around in some force. I yeah. mean, Lawrence, because uh, you sort of were, like, pretty positive on the other colorway. What do you think about this one? Um, That one isn't – they're – See the the guava ice one, the guava one is more. I feel like a, a women's colorway. It feels like it has like women's you know vibe to it. Like women mm-hmm. can definitely get away with it. Whereas the black one is more of a, all right. Dudes can get away. Dudes will rock these. Um, I feel like, and I've said this before, and I always say this. I say people, they tend to be like, oh, I'm not gonna. These are terrible. I'm not gonna mess with these. But and yeah. Then, and then as soon as Union drops or then everyone's complaining about how they couldn't get them. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I get upset at myself all the time now because I was going to buy the black toes at, at $600 after I had won a fantasy football championship. And I was like, well, just fucking treat yourself to them. And I was like, you know what? That's a lot. And then I fucking, and now I look back on it. And I'm like, yeah, that was dumb. Dumb yeah. not to. Wait, so what I mean, are the... Oh, these, these, this is these older are part of the article. By them. Yeah, these okay. Are just mock-ups. These, Those are mock-ups. These are, nothing. These are so, nice, but still. So I mean, the thing you know, I think obviously the thing that that makes it tough is the fact that Union has to follow up a four. They have to you know follow up a Jordan one with a four, and I think a, a Jordan one is so easy to not fuck up for the most part. Yeah, yeah. You're given you know you the tools that you can use on a Jordan one is pretty simple. I mean, as long as you stick to the, the color blocking. Union had they had their own idea of you know the the uh, rusted uh, or the you know the the yellow midsole which made it work. But then when you go to like a Jordan, I think a a two is easy because the the colorways are pretty simple. But when you get into a three, a four, a five, a six, a seven, or an eight, you can you can easily fuck it up. Nine, yeah. ten, twelve. I think yeah, I think you know not so much a twelve, but I, I think where there's there's multiple, there's multiple things, to, you know, that you can to, co- to color in, basically. Yeah, like, yeah. You, you, like some of these panelings could easily be uh, fucked up if you like put the wrong colors. If, yeah, yeah, you put a little just yeah, too yeah. much different color. Yeah, mm-hmm. go and try and use like a try to make a pair of sneakers on like Nike.com, and like if you just use the wrong color on one thing, it just ruins everything. That's what I'm saying. So. Yeah. It's uh it, to me it's a little tougher, but um, I like I said I feel like uh, what also will determine I think how people view the sneakers what happens with the tongue right now the tongue is tucked in 
Mm -hmm. uh, if we get to the point where the tongue is not tucked in and you can kind of flip it out like a normal Jordan 4, maybe the views will change. Um, I still think, I actually, like I said, I think they're both, I think the guava pair is not bad. I mean, it's not like, oh my God, this is the greatest Jordan 4 ever. I'm mm -hmm. never going to say that. I think Cause did a, a better job at their four. I think Travis Scott, I think Off-White, I think they all did a better job at their Jordan 4. Mm -hmm. But uh, this will serve a purpose eventually. And, you know, we'll see. Hey, listen, if I get, if I want to go on record. If I get a chance to get the, if I win the, the Guava pair, I'm probably keeping them. Mm-hmm. I'm probably going to keep them because, uh, fuck it, honestly. The black pair, maybe I'd move just because they, they're a little bit more plain than the guava pair. The guava pair, at least you could have a conversation with somebody and be like, why the fuck did you choose those over the mm -hmm. other ones? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but at least I would have a conversation. It's a, it's, it's, I'm telling you, man, it's ABG fucking magnets right there. Yo, man bun Luke attacking somebody for their sneaker color choice is very funny to me. <laughs> Just cause, because your height won't match your the energy you bring to the table, you know, yeah. you're gonna be like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> yeah, my energy is gonna be six four. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my you, actual you're height. Walking is up five, at five one. <laughs> five six, buddy. <laughs> I, only because of the man bun that adds three inches. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, <laughs> uh, that's great. Uh, just moving on. There's another because this it's a lot of Nike news, man. Like no one's really making other waves except Nike this week. Uh, so I think we talked about him a little while ago when Nike SB, uh, in a tweet, kind of shut down some leaked rumor shoe. Right. But these SB uh, Shashikos are actually coming out, and I th these have to be my favorite SB in a very long time. Really, really. Yeah, and because you know, I saw him on feet. I saw a guy with like some green uh, khaki type pants with him, and yo, I would, I, uh, I was like, yo, I could see myself in those. And I gotta get those. I could, I could see you in these. I definitely could see you in these. So uh, this concept was actually based off of a guy mocked up the like he did hand stitched that himself for the prototype. Oh shit. There's a red high, and that led into, like, a couple blazers that are coming out and shit. But I, these are fucking flames. Out of all the SBs that have come out, these are definitely the best ones, at least to me. I think it just might be to you, buddy. Why? What do you guys think? These are okay. These they're are solid. Really? They're, like, they're solid SB. Like, you know, they, like, the pattern, uh, like, the color blocking is very interesting. But, like, as far, like it doesn't have that same... Like, it's not one of those SBs that, like, blows you away. It's one of those SBs that, like, are very – they're good utilitarian shoes, in my opinion. Yeah, oh, I, was, I, mm -hmm. I was very blown. Oh. You should probably get that checked. I don't know, man. No. I, okay. Wait, Lawrence, finish your thought because I didn't mean to cut you off there. What were you going to no, say? No, I was going to say they're, they're, very, they're definitely a solid shoe. I'm not going to sit here and act like uh, they're not, but I, I don't think they're – I don't think they're top five, I don't, top seven uh, SB this year. I don't think they're going to end up, no. I would put them in five to me anyway. It's just, you know what, because number one, I, I story-based again. I might, I might be, be being dumb and biased based on the story of the rollout of this, but I loved how Nike SB was like, yo, that is not, like, yo, that's a fleet sneaker. Don't post that shit. Mm -hmm. Whatever tweet that there was like, yo, whatever information you got right here is wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then for the designer himself, he posted the the prototype on his account with the red version that he did. And everyone was like, oh, shit, that's cool. Because that's a cool that's a cool story to hand stitch it yourself and mm -hmm. then show it to somebody and they go like, oh, yeah, let's do that. And then yeah. for it to come out and that stitching is actually really clean. And I like how it overlaps multi panels. That, it, that is not only a nice color story. The stitch story is dope. And the whole story in general really hit me hard. Pause. Yeah, no, I get it. I get like I get it as as a designer. It is a very it's a very good shoe, but it's like it just doesn't. It like look at what came out this year, right? Chunky, Strange Loves, Travis, Grateful Dead's. So Chunky so, Safaris, Safaris, Safaris. Then, and then what's coming out even after that? You got fucking the uh, the Atmos uh, SBs. Mm -hmm. Uh, the bare bricks that are coming out. I mean, I don't think they're better than I don't think they're better than the Shashikos, but I, I think you know there's a lot of dunks that are, are better than this one. 
Part of the problem, I think, with how people are evaluating sneakers right now is using hype as a over like it's hype is only one attribute to a shoe. But right. I think a lot of people use it in like three different ways. They count it like three different times. But I'm I'm saying like in design like even design on the on the chunky donkeys, we've already like you've already said that you don't really like the design on them. Yeah, cow print is not a good print. I thought it told the story of Ben and Jerry's very well. No, it absolutely, which makes total sense. The ice cream, the cow, the milk, the yeah. whole thing. Yeah, no, and I said, I said conceptually the story was amazing. I loved it. But mm -hmm. it's still a cow print. Mm, okay. You know, the people I've seen wear them have actually pulled them off. There's right. only a couple people that I haven't seen. That, like, a couple people, I'm like, you look nuts. But for the most part, people <laughs> pull them off. But it's still a cow print. I hear you. You have to you have to mute everything else that you're doing, basically. Yeah, totally. You that whole story just has to be your foot. That whole outfit is strictly feet. Mm -hmm. I like these a lot, though. And the blazers, the blazers are solid out of that whole thing, and it it, it formulated a nice story that then Nike can, can continue telling if they choose to. Um, yeah, that design nerd, I guess, in me is like all about these. But yeah, I like these a lot. I see, I, the, I I see these having longevity. I say, I say that I, I could see these shoes having longevity, meaning like I see like them doing multiple colorways of these and like maybe yes. even getting one like every year. I see, see something like that happening. I don't see this being like a crazy hype thing. Uh, but then again, who fucking knows? Well, I'll say this and I know you're going to say it, it may not be a crazy hype thing, but every, every SB this year, SC, whether, yeah. whether general release, you can go with the, the orange, uh, was the laser, not the laser the the Hennessy's the right uh, the blue, blue joints the blue, yeah. Fur, blue furies the ones that look like the Laker colorway the mm -hmm. those the right it's the, but it's orange and uh, I mean all of those shits are have you know even when you look at the regular dump so I mean for us to say well these aren't gonna be hyped they're gonna be fucking hyped no they'll sell out they'll sell out but we'll see what the you know the numbers uh, hopefully won't be too crazy hopefully Chrissy will be able to actually get a pair. I mean, if I still feel like buying stuff after I buy a new phone, dude, I'm so <laughs> – the burden of having a $1,500 purchase that you know you have to make is so crazy. I, yeah. I lost something today too, but I didn't really want to talk about it. I went on – I was riding around on, on my skateboard for the first time in almost a year, uh, and one of my lenses popped out of my eyeglasses. Oh, no. Yeah. So I just lost that. Jeez. And, you know, but I was able, I, I retraced my steps and I found it, which is why I didn't feel like bringing it up earlier because I found wow. it. So I understand your pain for about 15 minutes. And then I was like, oh, cool, here they are. Jeez, Thanks, Luke. Man. Thanks, Luke. Thanks, no Ray. <laughs> so, so, you know, just having a brain sometimes helps. Oh, all right. Let's just attack <laughs> my intelligence, why don't you? <laughs> That's mean spirited. I'm sorry. No, the. Uh what? No, go low. No, we we're gonna say no. Say what you're gonna say. No, go I was gonna say, homeboy was like, "Yo, you want to take a cart and go look for it?" I was like, "Bro, I lost it on the back nine. What do yeah. you, you want me to go nine courses and just look for my phone? <laughs> what the oh, fuck is that? Wrong? What the back nine means? Yeah, the 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 nine to eighteen. That makes Jeez. sense. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Uh, you know, I wanted to talk about this. Speaking of uh, SB hype and and everything that's going on. Um, Travis Scott was pictured in a pair of Newcastles this week, oh, and no. Newcastle SB, and immediately the prices uh, jumped on the uh, on the dunks. Which is this is honestly like you know we've said this before. It's the fucking Travis Scott effect. Wow. Yeah, and you know what? I was trying to explain to my mom how this works because generally speaking, like. You don't – wasn't my mom? I was explaining to somebody, some, someone older, and I was like, I was like, yeah, like a rapper wear it, and then people want to buy it. And they're like, that's not like a manly thing that happens. Like, uh -huh. guys don't do that. I was like, oh, you'd be very surprised. Uh -huh. Actually, this is more of like reality TV type of shit than you, you, you realize. Uh -huh. Yeah. Sports and these celebrities. Dudes also, like, have this Kardashian shit. We just, like, look cool while we're doing it, and it's, like, better <laughs> content. Which is why we don't get shit on. The, the Kardashian shit is a terrible show, which is why everyone just hate. They don't know why they're famous. Or, uh, generally speaking, the, the consumers don't. The, the show's bad. It's poor television. It's like it's main mind belt, like whatever. You know what I mean? It's like just melt your brain. Chris Jenner makes your kids do Playboy. 
Yeah, but sports and rappers and shit, it's the same thing. It's just like, yo, my man dunks, and then a rapper who has a song I like wears it, and I'm like, oh, now I want it. Now you want him. Right. But, yeah, man, like, the, the Travis effect is strong. It's real, and it's about as strong as a uh, you can get outside of being a Kardashian, even though he basically is one. He is. He is one, technically. He, he signed to that, that, uh, that company. <laughs> he did. He was a free agent, and then they said, hey, we, like, we like what you're doing over there. Yeah, our joined? daughter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the contract. you gotta deal. You got to feed her now. Um, wait, so what, what shoe was he seen wearing again? Because I didn't see him wear this. He's wearing the Newcastle uh, SB Dunk. Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then, How much are they going for online now? Four figures now. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's fuck? two grand. Why? Yeah, if you look at, and if you look at the, the prices of the last few sales, it's definitely the... Uh, it was lower than that, for sure. Oh, my God. Do you have it on your screen? Yeah, hold up. I got pull you. Pull it up. Pull it up. Holy shit. I want to see this. This is nuts. Uh, I didn't... Like, we all know Travis Scott's a very influential guy, but sometimes you just forget and you don't see the numbers. This is physically seeing the numbers of how influential he is. It's fucking bananas, dude. What are the, what are the last sales? Can you scroll down to the graph? <laughs> oh my god mm-hmm. wow um, so for the audio listeners they were going for about a regular price no, not that, was, that long ago no, that was that's two, two years, years ago. ago oh wait no excuse me Let, sorry. let's look all right, when, the, when the Travis picture posted which was maybe I think maybe like two three days ago we were before that we were looking at you know prices of around, around six yeah and then we go to when he when the po- when like they go around July. Then oh yeah, here we go. Yeah, July thirtieth. Oh. Yeah. Wow. So I need I need Travis Scott to start wearing Ewings. Literally July thirtieth, there was four sales in a day of not just nine and a half. Right. There you go. Wow. Wait, let's go to all sizes. Hold on. Will you fucking work? So I think I'd, uh, yeah, size all. No, you're still in nine and a half. Oh, am I? Okay. Ooh. Oh, no. Yeah. That, 1,200, the, 1,300, 900, 1,000. 10, 11. Yeah, this is nuts. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Price premium, original retail price, it's over 900, 900% increase. Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. 69 we were sales, good, though. We were having a good show, Lawrence. Why did you bring this up? Oh, Why did you bring this to my attention? I mean, no, well, no, it's, it's, we should be bringing it up and we should be talking about it because no, it's, ri- it's ridiculous to see a guy who's probably younger than you wear a pair of sneakers and then you want to go buy them for 900% more than they're worth. I, I don't want to buy them for yeah. 900 but No, yeah. I, but someone saw him wear that. And I mean, look, to have this amount of money, you either have your parents' credit card or right. you're a grown-ass adult that can pay for things like this when they want to. You probably have a good-paying job. You make like 120k a year, some 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 shit where you're probably older than Travis, right? So or, you see him wear it, and then you're like, all right. Or you're a reseller who is now going to try to take advantage of. Oh, uh, that's the other one too. That's all. Tr- that's a good point. You were trying to buy in low, see, because you if you bought in at 800, 900, you're already making 400 dollars. Uh. I mean, this effect is is is. It goes even to, all right, so this was before, Luke, you did the podcast. We did an episode with Royce Wynn Mm -hmm. back in, like, the late 70s, I think. And I was trying to explain that. So I saw the Spider-Man movie, and he was wearing some, like, regular gray-ass Air Maxes in the movie. And then we went on StockX, and they were, like, doubled in price just because the kids saw them in the Spider-Man movie. Mm -hmm. Then they instantly got the nickname the Spider-Man Homecoming Air Maxes. And the whole shift around him changed. It wasn't a general release shoe anymore. Now it was a Spider-Man shoe. Right. 
same thing with what happened with the I think the origin stories were much cheaper before the movie came out. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and then the movie came out, and I think that shot up from like four hundred to eight hundred. I mean, this is uh, this is insane. Like I said, every if you have SBs and you like to sell sneakers, sell them shiz now because yeah. we are at the height of uh, of SB. Uh, SB fever, baby. I, it may, I mean, maybe it goes higher. We don't know. But I'm saying if you want to cash out, used SBs, new SBs, cash out. People are looking to buy. Yeah. I mean, speaking of the next cash out and speaking of hype and speaking of these uh, random model trains that come out of nowhere, seemingly, uh, there's a rumor that Supreme is going to be doing a Jordan 1. <sighs> which I think... Uh, might be the cap on the one. They might that might be like the last kind of like. All right, here you go. That's the last. For who? Nah, for for Supreme or for Jordan One? No, for Jordan, J- for Jordan Ones. Uh, no, no way. No. Okay. They're just gonna keep making them. <laughs> no, I'm gonna not gonna keep... say they're gonna stop making them, but I, the ones were the thing for a minute. Right. They still are. They still are, but they're not. They're dying off because these other models are kind of taking over. The SBs are still running. Bro, Jordan no. One is not is not is not dying off. No, 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 no. Oh. Don't misinterpret what I'm saying. The focus is going to be removed from ones. And you think it's going to the staying power of SBs and I think they're going to shift it to other things. Like the all right, so we don't get sales for how long, and then we get one in a pack, and then one band. It's, I'm saying they're like they're trying to divert their attention from these other things. They can right. only drill you in the fucking head with ones, SBs, fours, and threes for. I mean, yes, they will forever, but like not with this much hype around them, bro. Hmm. I'll, let's let's just okay. If you think Jordan ones are dead, and let's just say this. Whoa, whoa, no, 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 hold on, not, not dead. dead, not dead. But if they, if you think that they're sl- like they're slowly trying to die out or or whatever, you just, divert like, you, hype. Yeah. Okay. This week coming out, we have the uh, the Japan uh, two thousand one. Uh, neutral gray Jordan yep. ones that have right. extreme people are fucking clamoring for these Jordan ones right like you see we, that comes out what on August 7th so that's gonna suck then there's the then this week there's also the satin red uh, Jordan one uh, I think that's a women's coat that has that's extreme ladies terms, yep. all right now also let's just now let's talk about Chicago ones mm-hmm. all right that one when, when there was like you said, we just talked about the last dance came out. The the Chicago ones, they went. They are now a fifteen hundred to two thousand dollar sneaker. And I granted the, the prices were always high on those, but with the last dance, those they pushed those sneakers so high. All right, so I, I cannot say that they're gonna divert. Yeah, they may not be. They may not be fucking jumping out the gate with four figures like some of these SBs are, but fucking Ch- Jordan ones are always going to uh, be coveted. They're they're like you, like I said, you look at you look at a pair of Jordan ones. I'm just looking right now. I mean, there's a th- they're all pretty much a thousand dollars over. They're all close to fifteen hundred dollars unless you're a size seventeen or eighteen. Right. Well, so, here. I hear what you're saying, and I do not disagree with, with you at all. The headline here, which this is all speculation because this is not – it's a rumor, so who knows. Mm-hmm. Um, they're saying for 2021. All the releases you just talked about are within a week from today, and I agree with you. Like, that, them shits is flying off, and people are going to buy the shit out of them, right? Right. But if we're talking towards 2021, which that, that could mean December 2021. I, I don't think it's going to be that long until we get these sneakers, but there is a track record of us hearing about some shit early on, and then a year and a half later, that's when we get it. Okay. Right. I'm thinking by then, they want to get off a lot of the focus of the ones, because you they need them to stay relevant. They need them to still be the one that we all know and love right now. But if we get drilled in the head like we have been to this point, then people are just going to get sick of ones. There's no way you can flood the market with this many hype versions of one model and then us not try to find some other shit because at the end of the day the purest of this culture is people want to look and see seem different from other people right right so they don't want us to be able to uh 
still be individuals while having the hype shit. If everyone got ones, then ones ain't going to be hyped. That's basically what I'm trying to say. So it seems Bro. like. But also, let's not forget, these are coming out at the end of the year. Bro, these, people. Oh, sorry. These are not that great. People, people still, people go ape shit for mid Jordan ones. Like Jordan one is not going. It's. I mean, he's time. not wrong. <laughs> the the fucking hype on a Jordan one is always. It's it's gonna. It's always gonna be there. I now, feel granted, you, but granted, like okay. you said, the the focus may be let's fucking let's knock out all these let's get <clears> these SBs back to to like hype hype high 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 status and you're like well Jordan ones may have to take a backseat to other models understood. Yeah. But a Jordan One is always going to people are always going to go crazy for a Jordan One. There's just there's no ifs ands or buts. You can try to you can maybe try to make not create it, not make as many OG ones. But I guarantee you, if you made five hundred thousand uh, black and red Jordan Ones, I guarantee you people would still go like it. it, it yeah, it, it's just the way. It's just that that model, bro. Like the the resurgence of that model in the last ten years has created such a frenzy because a it's a it's the OG uh Jordan. B, it's so easy to wear. You know what I'm saying? There's so many different things that go along with that sneaker. So I, I but I just don't see it. Yeah, well, I wasn't trying to say that breads aren't gonna sell. Like that's not for one second that the core Jordan ones are right. there's they're always going. So don't misinterpret that. But I it just seems like what they try to do is because they did this with the Air Force One. Air Force One had a little resurgence, it was coming back. They were like, all right, Supreme capped this off. They just slapped the shit on the side, and they were like, all right, Bong, where are the SBs at? It seems like they give Supreme the last bit of the hype that the model has to tr- carry it out. That's all I'm trying to say. Trying to send it on the boat? Like I, don't, the I, don't, I don't agree with you on that. I think I, – because I, I, you know what? I'll say this with Supreme. Supreme has jumped on uh, models that – weren't super popular and then supreme started a resurgence of a model perfect example it's air max 98 on supreme, supreme that's true dropped it, supreme dropped the air max 98 when no one was wearing them shits and then right. as soon as they wore it then it was like boom they do give certain stores certain models uh, or certain you know certain companies certain models and it starts a resurgence for example the uh uh spiridons or spires uh, the the shit yeah just, just did. yeah that's, That's also a very, example. Yeah, for sure. So yeah. but I do understand what you're saying where it's like, oh, Supreme gets the collab and, and, and is it topping it off? I'm going to disagree with you on that because sure. I feel like, like I said, Supreme has gotten what? I mean, they had the, they did the fucking, uh, the subtemples, which yes, the subtemples were, they were pretty big in their own, the, the up temples were pretty big in their own right. And they came back out maybe a, a year or two before Supreme decided to to jump on the bandwagon, but there's times when there's no hype on a shoe, and Supreme's able to kind of, you know, what I mean, and so, they've done that a couple of times too. So yeah, yeah no, so I'm not disagreeing with anything you're saying. Uh, in this moment, to me, it seems like that's the cap off, but I might be wrong too. Uh, I know that this is going to be a, another four figure shoe, though, for sure. Look, I see it, if if it is true that. Um, that Jordan ones are going to go back into hiding for a little bit. Uh, usually that means that we'll get a re-release of, uh, of one of our favorite colorways just to get the hype going again. So I don't know. It's not a negative entirely. We might be able to get a, a pair of bread ones again, or a Chicago one re-release if, uh, if Jordans die down, because that's kind of what they do, right? They just, mm-hmm. when shit starts to die down with Jordans, they go, Oh, here's that shoe that you've always wanted. And you guys love Jordans again. Jordan 1s again. So it's going to be based off the 2003 collab. The SBs? Or the yeah. Dunks, rather? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'll take an L on the orange ones again. <laughs> well, that's the rumor. It's supposed to be based off of the, uh, the uh, OG. I would, that would be great. That would be great. Just so I can look at them and have, like, imagine in my head that I could have them. Mm-hmm. What is uh, – dude, this, this checks so many hype boxes. Supreme – Jordan 1, SB from early 2000s, and then coming out soon. <laughs> yeah. Yep. The hypest shit ever. <laughs> hypest shit in the world. Uh, I mean, I think we can kind of uh, get out of here soon. Was there any? I mean, there was a couple things I wanted to talk about, but it's not. 
Yeah, it's not, what I wanted to talk about wasn't that important. We could talk about it next week. Yeah, yeah. I think we're I think we're good. I think we uh we handled enough. Yeah. Do you we guys still have any hypeless heat this week? Oh. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, I do, but I didn't prepare. <laughs> oh no, hold oh, on. No. Oh no. I'm going to I'm going to take the one you gave me. <laughs> yeah, show that one. I will show uh all right. So, recently released uh pair of patrick ewings called the pickle <laughs> fucking with they teamed up with grillo and they made fucking patrick ewing and honestly i fuck with these uh, pretty heavy i really like them and uh if you throw throw some uh pink laces on these i think that, that would really come out really nicely i don't know i'm for it also there's still a lot of sizes left so you can do that. Also, I found them on GOAT for pretty much the same price. So $100 gets you a, an interesting pair of shoes. If, if you live in New York, uh, an old guy's going to come up to you and be like, I remember when I had Ewan's when I was a kid. And, and that'll be your day. So get get a pair of these. Chris, well, you got I, yours? Yeah. So I didn't have one specifically. I just wanted to shout out this one model. Um, I am a Bach boy at heart, so I occasionally give uh, Reebok the, some credit. It maybe doesn't deserve. It does deserve. Who knows? But um, these Ventilator Supremes oh, wow. are a very solid shoe that I think is very underrated amongst all the crap that Reebok has. Because these, without any pure technology, it's not technology, it's not a pump, it doesn't have Hexalite in it, it doesn't have anything that Reebok is known to have. It's just like a solid shoe with good paneling and good and generally good colorways on the ones they come out with. Yeah. That, uh, are those the, the black pair? That's the bait pair. No, these black and reds, you know, actually, I don't know if no, not bait... the black and red, the black and white ones underneath the reds. Oh, these guys right here. Yeah. Are those? Red? Yeah. Yeah. Bait LA Kings. Yeah. So, I mean, they, they've been, I think Cameron touched these paws. I mean, I, these are a model that I think have been very gone very under the radar. Just like they're comparable to most solid sneakers that other brands have, you know what I mean? And it's not their classic leather, it's not their club C, it's not their workout low, it's not these like athletic older models that we all know Reebok for. They, these can sit next to most current sneakers depending on the colorway. And uh, yeah, I bet these could hang with some Air Maxes for sure. Yeah, for sure. And I'm not saying that like these are amazing also, but these are a solid shoe, and the price point's not that bad depending on it's like generally like a hundred bucks. Yeah, I think that's that's a pretty fair price for these. These are, these seem pretty nice. I like them. Yeah. You got one this week, Al? I got no hype with heat this week, man. Damn, bro. No hype with heat. You all hype with that heat. Yep. <laughs> all hype this week. No heat. No no hype. Um. Well, I think that'll do it. Um. You know, you guys can follow us on social media uh, at not that Cheney at LZD three two five at Trovisus. Uh, at Sub Podcast NYC on Instagram. Uh, you can email us, Sub Podcast, uh, sub podcast NYC at gmail.com. There's a phone number attached on the Instagram too. You can text us if you want. We've gotten some voicemails, but y'all say yeah. some crazy shit, so we never drop reply a, them. Drop a voicemail about what it's like in Europe as far as like sneaker drops. Do you guys oh. have French bots? What's up? Yeah, for sure. No, drop us a line about that shit because we don't know if your bots say wee wee or not. Um, yeah. And uh, also hit the Discord. Hit the Discord. It's a there lot of go. fun. That's really it. Um, final thoughts, guys? Anything? Uh, I got a top knot now. It's top notch, buddy. Top there notch, top, top notch. Top not. <laughs> All right, so we'll see you guys next week. Peace and uh, stay safe. Yes, peace.